Hello everyone, Professor Green here. I'm doing a quick video to help walk you through what debugging some of your web page problems looks and feels like between Sublime and Chrome and the Chrome uh, dev tools. So what I have here, let me switch over to Chrome, and I've got on the left uh, a version that you all have linked to. This is what it's supposed to look like. I'm currently working on the Bubble Under Site Chapter 4 and at the end of chapter four this is what it's supposed to look like and then here I have a version uh, that I'm it's not quite right and I'm trying to build on and I can't quite figure out where my errors are at so how do I go about uh, fixing them without pulling all of my hair out so the first thing you want to do is just get yourself prepped a make sure that you've got both uh, you know the HTML page you're interested in and the CSS file you're interested in open in sublime text uh, you can either do it in tabs, and if you haven't used this yet, it's really handy. You can go to um, Layout under the View Bar and give yourself some multiple columns. So what I have here, again, on the left is what it's supposed to look like, and on the right, what, um, what I'm currently working with. So I'm good in Sublime Text. In Chrome, we want to right-click and expect Element on both of these so that we can just kind of compare notes. And as we dig in, and I do have some um, Chrome add-ons that are doing lots of different things and adding some code in here. This is not the code, so don't, don't let that bug you. I'll be sure to try to uh, keep you where we need to be here. So if I just quickly look at this, even though it looks like maybe uh, Chapter 4 is working on CSS positioning, and this looks like a positioning error, uh, I immediately see a difference in the way that the dev tools break down the HTML structure here. Uh, everything's inside header here, whereas header is contained in its own div as a, uh, from navigation from body content. Let's go take a look at our HTML and see what's going on there. So again, on the left, what it's supposed to look like. On the right, what I am uh, currently working on. And if I try to match up my div tags, I get down here to line 18. Ah, here's a problem. I accidentally used an opening tag instead of a closing tag. Well, that's that's not going to help me. So let me save this back, and immediately I, I get some change. My dev tools refresh here. We go into the body. Okay, so I see header uh, and body content. I don't see navigation, so I'm still having some kind of uh, problem and now you notice that it's actually it's not showing at all so is that a CSS error or an HTML error uh, in this instance we go through and start looking it's an HTML error I happen to have forgotten to um, type this code in so let me copy it in and notice I put in end of navigation div I probably got distracted or something and just didn't add it so let's add it right here now I need to make sure that I don't have too many div tags. And this is where good indentation is your friend. We'll indent to kind of keep ourselves sane and say, is this what I'm supposed to have? And site branding, tagline, my navigation, end of that. Am I supposed to have uh, an end of the header extra div here? No, it's right here. So we do have an extra div. Let's get rid of that. And let's take another look. We do a refresh. Okay, a little bit better. Now we've got our navigation. Looks like we do still have some CSS uh, anchor tag hover errors there, but we'll, we'll get to those later but I'm still not seeing my bubble under all the way across. I haven't noticed any problems with my header in the HTML. My div tags look good. So maybe it's a CSS error. Let's switch over to our CSS files and see what's going on. I do have a separate video on helping diagnose CSS errors in Sublime Text. Things like, oh, I've got something wrong here. I'm missing a semicolon. So that helps, puts both of these away. By default, uh, it will, all, anytime you use an ID in CSS, it's not recommended. 
So by default, it'll tell you, hey, you might not want to do this. Don't let that throw you. The book is telling you to use the IDs. Um, and just uh, you can kind of bypass those. Let's keep looking here. Again, all of these, uh, it's telling me you might want to look at it, but I don't see any problems. I don't see any problems. I do see a problem here. My A active, oh, that's, that's where I had an issue, and it's not supposed to be a hyphen. We need a colon. That will fix that. I've got another one missing my so this is just easily going through and fixing some CSS errors uh, we'll save that back refresh our page and uh, did not fix our current error so let's see if we can diagnose what's really happening here we'll right click inspect element to really get us and, and see, this is what I love about Chrome DevTools. So I can hover over each of the HTML elements. You can see up above, it kind of shows me some information about it here. And then on the bottom right hand corner, it kind of gives me the CSS that it's applying to that. So what I want to do is get the same thing inspected on both. So we've got this H1 on both. Do I see any differences? doesn't look like it. You can also change from the styles to the computed which can be really handy if you don't see something as you get really really big you know thousands of lines CSS files this styles can get really really long with things that it's inheriting from other CSS rules that's where the computed comes in handy because it just tells you look this is what I applied this is what's really happening but it doesn't tell you where it came from as easily until you click the drop down arrow and then it kind of uh, it gives you a hint so it doesn't look like it says H1. Let's try the site branding ID. And this is how you debug things. You just try to go through and see what's uh, going on. CSS looks the same here. Let's bounce back up to header. Bounce back up to header. And now I see a difference. Here I have position absolute. I'm getting that position absolute, but I'm missing my header width equals 100% rule. Let's see if that fixes my problem. So we'll come in here, we've got a header rule applied. Let's add the width 100%. Save that, refresh. Whoop, refreshed the wrong one. And there we go, and now we're starting to see something that's similar. I can still see that I've got some CSS errors, but I can continue going through this process, inspect what looks wrong, and around it what's look, looking wrong and uh, go back and forth between my Chrome Dev Tools and my CSS to see where the mismatch is. And that's how you debug web pages. Thanks for watching.